Hello everybody, I'm Andreas Reisenbauer, working as System Architect and heading Research and Development of Frequentis Maritime. I would like to show you the Matrix product suite and do a small demonstration here. First, let's have a look on a typical maritime operator working position containing multiple screens, keyboard and mouse audio devices. First, this is the resource management screen. Uh, the next one uh, is the chart. Uh, here the initial action uh, module which also shows the relevant logging information for the incident being handled. An information gathering module, uh, all the information about the vessel being involved here. And certainly we have the voice communication system, a vertically mounted touch screen for easy to use voice communication system. The first application I want to demonstrate is the voice communication part. It's dominated by the pane with the radio buttons. We can arrange up to 130 buttons a page and can assign up to 8 pages uh, to support something like 400-500 radios for the operator working position. Uh, each radio button shows the state of the radio, whether it's in selected mode, whether it's in monitoring mode. And we also see uh, the signal strength indication uh, and selected by other indications, all these things. We have the function button area here, uh, which can be fully customized based on the per role specific needs and provides functions like broadcasting, patching of radio channels, telephone radio cross connections, speak through mode, uh, all these functions are accessible uh, via this small button here. And certainly we have a well elaborated uh, radio remote control function. In VHF for example this is mainly adjusting squelch level, changing channels, those things. In MF it might be clarifier, uh, volume control per radio, uh, all the things are accessible via this pane over there. And certainly uh, there is different color schemes. Uh, the dusk mode we see here and there is a day mode as well. Okay, let's start with the chart module. Uh, we see here a base map which we currently derive from OpenStreetMaps but certainly any other kind of base map, uh, most probably an S57 chart, we can use as a base map as well. Here when we zoom in a little bit uh, we see the Norwegian uh, S57 base map. Certainly the map has dynamic layers. Let's start with the AIS target layer. There is a project out in the field uh, which is called AIS Hub. Uh, the idea is uh, somebody provides his AIS feed to the community and as a compensation he gets back the AIS feed from all the others. And you see here uh, this is our contribution some vessels located here in Danube River uh, in Austria um, and as a compensation we get back uh, the not full word coverage but significant coverage uh, of AIS targets. When I zoom in a little bit more we see more details. Now we are in the channel. We can easily retrieve more details of a vessel by simply activating the right mouse click. We see it is MSC LoRa, we see the IMO registration number, we see the MMSI, we see the flag state and its current position. We also identify that it's on the way with 14.4 nodes, uh, its course over ground and its heading. From the ship database we also retrieve the dimensions. In this case it's really a huge thing with 300 meters almost in length and 40 meters in width. And when populated accordingly we also see uh, the voyage related data. In this case by opening this context menu I also can easily get in contact with the vessel. The most natural thing I would do is pressing this button here. You see the context menu, the hover, indicates send an individual call. What the system does in the background, it checks what is the position of the vessel. The system knows about your radio coverage. It chooses the proper base station 
to select to send out a DSC call and by this time it also proposes a working channel for further voice communication. If so configured, it even automatically keys in this radio so that the next thing you would need to do is simply press the PTT and get in touch uh, with MSC LoRa. The next thing I want to share with you is voice communication, a really brand new way to operate voice communication with a total new user interface. For this purpose, I simply enable the, air, the, the base stations. Um, you can zoom in here a little bit. Uh, and what I can easily do is uh, to demonstrate the coverage area. In this case, uh, it's somewhere in Greenland. Uh, because of the uh, shadows of the mountains, we see this cluttered uh, coverage pattern uh, depicted in, in here. To get a more realistic uh, scenario how this could look like, I would like to switch uh, to a pre-recorded video I would like to share with you. I have got a screen capture of a typical uh, operator in Norway. What we see here is the huge amount of uh, voice space stations, uh, all located along their coastline. What we also see is uh, if a base station has at least one radio being in keyed in mode, this yellow arc in here. But we also see uh, if there is at least one of the radios uh, located on this base station out of service, where this circle is illuminated in yellow. Um, and now if we would start uh, the voice communication, we easily get the visual indication from where the signal comes from. So we see there is obviously a channel 16 voice communication in here. We see the base stations with the green circles triggering their squawk signal. And because of this transparency, we can easily identify the intersecting area where all the base stations that receive the signal uh, share a common coverage area. And now it's easy for the operator to identify it has to be one of these one, two, three, four, five, maybe seven targets who is the originator of this talk burst. And really we can state that this indication is performed in real time. So it's really as fast as you would see the indication at the touch screen with the traditional button layout of the voice communication system. The other way around, if there is an outgoing transmission, we see here red means outgoing signal, uh, while green again means reception. So we have working channel conversation here in the north, while we have channel 16 conversation ongoing here in the west. So for all this generation Y operators, it's much more intuitive as it behaves like Google Maps when you do voice communication. Certainly you can key in the radio on the chart. Uh, you see if somebody has the radio in keyed in mode, some of the other operators. So it simply follows what you do on the touchscreen and you can use it as a complementary or as an instead of user interface for the traditional touch GUI. The next layer I want to show is the DSC layer. We are operating an MF antenna here in Vienna on our rooftop, so uh, we are not receiving too many calls, uh, but at least some of them are there. And I've got two on my chart. Uh, the most intuitive way to demonstrate or to show the uh, the SC call to the operator is to place it at the chart where they have been occurred. In this case, it was an individual call from Gas Venture to Santa Cruz. Certainly, if you are operating an MRCC, you would filter out individual calls that are not addressed to you. In this case, I'm so happy to see something that I don't want to filter them out. But let's assume this was a distress alert. The first thing uh, normally the operator would do is to send the DSC acknowledge, the distress acknowledge. You think about how to do this. First identify where are they. Is, 
is it me to be responsible for them? If I'm responsible, what radio to use to send a DSC call? What radio to use for the working channel? Looking in tables, looking into books. What we do here is uh, we press this check mark here, labeled with acknowledge the DSC call. The system in the background knows about uh, which is the base station to use to send a DSC call. And it also proposes for the operator the working channel for further voice communication with that vessel. And if so configured, it automatically keys in this radio for this operator. So after pressing the check mark, the next thing he would need to do is simply pressing the PTT. While looking up what might be wrong, it is quite helpful to see uh, information about the sender of the message. In this case, as it is a routine call, you see it's illuminated in green. A distress alert would show this in red. We get all the relevant information. Uh, we see the name of the vessel. We have the MMSI as part of the DSC call. We have the IMO registration number. We have the position where the vessel is currently located with its current speed over ground, course over ground, and its heading. And certainly also we see the call sign. If it has shown that it was a, a wrong positive, we would simply mark the DSC call as processed and maybe even put it to the archive. Sending out DSC calls, I think we already touched a little bit. I just want to repeat that procedure again. So if I want to get in touch with this particular vessel, I do a right cl mouse click on the vessel, press the send individual button here, and send out the, in the DSC call with the proposed working channel and being able to easily and immediately communicate with them. Have you ever thought about using DSC area calls and what's the uh, use of it. Uh, one of our customers are using them to announce weather reports. They have separated their waters into multiple areas. Uh, they have to look up for the areas, then manually enter the coordinates, uh, sending out the area call, which causes the vessel's radio to tune to the announced working channel to listen to the weather report. Uh, and that's really, really tough work, uh, entering the coordinates manually, not doing an error in here. We can simply do the same procedure with this activity. We simply mark an area, press the right mouse click, and here send call to area without any chance to fail here uh, because it's visually clear which area I'm sending the call to. So maybe that's the second chance for the DSC area call for the future. I've got so many more modules I would like to share with you. Uh, maybe for example our maritime directory which is our really really fast ship database with a open and easy to use API for any kind of third party integration. So showing all the things about the vessels. There is our dashboard module. In this case it shows the feed of the ES hub I mentioned before we show on our chart. And there are so many more. So please get in touch with us uh, if we could, could arrange another demo for you.